Hello everyone. Today the topic is about the structure of enzymes. So enzymes actually have an active site, and to this active site, the substrate uh, will bind, and it gets converted into a product. So we are going to know about this active site and the salient features of this active site. So what actually is the active site? Active site or the active center of an enzyme? It represents as a small region at which the substrate binds and participates in the catalysis. So this is the enzyme, and this to this enzyme, big enzyme, active site is a smaller proportion, and to this smaller proportion, actually uh, the substrate will bind and it forms an enzyme substrate complex, which will get converted into enzyme plus product. so these are basically regarded as clefts or crevices or pockets which are occupying a small region in the big enzyme molecule salient features of the active site the existence of active site is due to the tertiary structure of protein which resulting in the three dimensional native conformation so basically because of the three dimensional structure of the protein there is the presence of this active site and the active site again processes a substrate binding site and a catalytic site so this is the big enzyme and to this big enzyme there is a smaller portion or a smaller area called as active site and to this active site again there is a substrate binding site and a catalytic site so the amino acids or the catalytic residues forming the active site are far from each other in the linear sequence of its tertiary structure so actually as we have discussed the enzymes are protein in nature and protein in nature and they have a tertiary structure and in this tertiary structure also the, the amino acids which are actually contributing to the active site are not linear in nature and they are away from, they are not linear for example if you see the enzyme lysozyme it has 129 amino acid but the amino acids uh, which at the place of 35 at 52 62 63 and 101 they contribute to form the active site and this happens mainly because of the 3d conformation of the tertiary structure of protein so this means that the amino acids which are linearly arranged they do not form the uh, active site but the amino acids which are actually 3d uh, arranged which are not linearly arranged they contribute to the active site the active site is not rigid in structure and shape it is rather flexible to promote the specific substrate binding and the substrate binds at the active site by weak non covalent bonds and the commonly found amino acids at the active site are serine aspartate histidine cysteine lysine arginine glutamate tyrosine etc and among these amino acids serine is the most frequently found amino acid as we discussed enzymes are protein in nature and proteins are made of amino acids and the most commonly amino acids that you see at the active site of the amino acids are all these and out of all these amino acids serine is the most frequently found amino acid and enzymes are specific in their action because of the existence of the active site and many enzymes re uh, require certain non protein small additional factors enzymes as such are protein in nature but they require some non proteinaceous substances for their effective action and they are called as cofactors and the cofactors may be organic or inorganic in nature and organic cofactors are called as coenzymes so the cofactors on which some enzyme depend are present as a part of the catalytic site so we have discussed that the active site is made of a substrate binding site and a catalytic site and this non proteinaceous uh, cofactors they are present as a part of the catalytic site so this is the structure or the diagram of an enzyme and this is the active site which is a smaller region in the big uh, enzyme uh, molecule uh enzyme and this is the substrate binding site two substrate binding site and the center one is the catalytic site and this enzyme also requires some non proteinaceous additional factors called as cofactors and these cofactors can be organic or inorganic in nature and organic cofactors are called as coenzymes so the protein part of the enzyme is called as apoenzyme 
and the non protein part of the enzyme is called as coenzyme and which together continue co called as holo enzyme so as we discussed cofactors can be of two types metal cofactors which are inorganic compounds and organic cofactors metal cofactors are metallo enzymes or metallozymes and or metal activated enzymes and organic cofactors are coenzymes and prosthetic groups so this is the active enzyme is holo enzyme holo enzyme is called as the active enzyme which is formed by the combination of the apo enzyme which is the protein part and the coenzyme that is the non protein part so apo enzyme and co coenzyme together they combine to form this holo enzyme which is the active enzyme so functional unit of the enzyme is known as holo so that is about the active site active site is the smaller region on the enzyme and this active site uh, is required for the catalytic activity of the enzyme it has uh, substrate binding sites and catalytic site and this active site is made of amino acids which are not linear in a, linearly arranged but different amino acids in the 3d arrangement and uh, this in addition to this uh, uh, protein part the active site also requires some non protein additional cofactors which are organic or inorganic and the organic cofactor is called as coenzyme and the protein part is the apo enzyme and non protein part is the coenzyme which together constitute to form a holo enzyme which is the active enzyme thank you